Welcome to the Sales and Marketing Show on GSB TV, our weekly webcast series providing insight and advice for small business owners and independent professionals from our team here in Atlanta. I'm Tyler Schmidt, this is Amanda Adams, and today we're going to talk to you about event marketing. And why do you feel that event marketing is effective? Yeah, because it's all about engagement. Um, in our business, we certainly do a lot of sales over the phone, but time and time again, when we talk to our clients and our potential clients, they tell us that they can cultivate a much more meaningful relationship when they have that one-on-one -on -one face to face time with a representative. Exactly. So that face to face is so important and we see it every single day that, you know, when you're trying to build your brand and you're working with these clients, there's nothing more effective than face to face communication. And we've seen that through email, um, through any type of advertisements, nothing beats actually getting to see these clients and getting in front of them through hosting the event. Yeah, and that's human psychology. I mean, you can ask anyone, um, would they rather conduct business over the phone where they can't see the person react to them, see their smile, see their emotions, and they're going to tell you that face-to-face that -face is still more effective. And this is one of the reasons why we're introducing video marketing to all of you, is because we're finding that video marketing similarly is actually 600 times more effective than any other type of marketing. So while we are of that technology age, or digital marketing is so important, and, and it always will be from here on out, you still need that face-to-face -face interaction to really get a, a deeper relationship with your clients. Absolutely, so how do you feel like, what's the best way to maximize the opportunities when you're working with these clients, when you're going face-to-face -face with them? What do you think is important when you're actually hosting these events? Yeah, when you're hosting an, an event, I think one of the most important things is to be unique with your event. Think outside of the box. Think about your industry and look at some of the trends and what people are doing and do the opposite. Um, I know you, were, you had mentioned earlier there's a local restaurant here that just did an event that because it was so unique, you'll never forget about it. What, talk about that Absolutely. A so I'm glad you mentioned that. And it was unique uh, and it helped boost their brand. And I know this is on a broader scale, but it was still an individual restaurant and it was, it was a local Chick-fil-A. And what they did, they had a, a cow drop. Uh, from the top of a building and each of them had you know little coupons and gift cards inside of each of the cows mm -hmm. and what did that do it was unique it helped boost their brand it brought people there and it got people into their store in the future so you know what we're trying to do here is, is identify these unique opportunities help you build your brand through doing things that other companies and other groups are not doing and i know that was one specific example of a restaurant but we talk about you know if you're an insurance agent, if you are a legal shoulder rep, if you're selling you know, something not necessarily in a storefront, you're still able to host these you know, client appreciation events, mm -hmm. um, bringing in referrals that your potential clients you know, can bring in their friends that maybe you could potentially work with as well. Uh, and so these are unique opportunities that you can have uh, that, that you know, can help boost your brand. Right, and, and another thing, look what Chick-fil-A did. Their competitors, other fast food restaurants and restaurant chains, are still sending out coupons in the mail. I couldn't tell you the last time I got a Chick-fil-A coupon in the mail, but doing events like that, where they are doing a different type of marketing, where they're dropping cows and coupons and getting people into the restaurant, is something that people are gonna be more prone to do. Because when you send out a mailer and it's covered up from, from competitors, then you're leaving it up to the consumer to decide if they even do clip a coupon at that point. So I, I like ideas like that. Another um, thing to think about when you do event marketing is where you spend your time. Um, one of the things that can happen when you do event marketing, especially if you're in the insurance industry, the legal industry, or a small business owner, is you can spend too much time doing the wrong things at events. So let's say you have an event, you've got 20 prospects there and, and 15 good prospects. Well, you probably need to spend time and engage with all of them, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to single anyone out and kind of leave the others to fend for themselves. So you still have to do that, that fine art of, of working the room. Absolutely, and I'm glad that you mentioned that too. When we talked, you know, how there's no nothing greater than face-to-face -face communication, but also we see that through the networking and through the client referrals. Um, and so, you know, just talking about this specific example at Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A was able to show their, you know, customer service and engage with all the people that were there at this, this specific event. They were able to work the room, mm -hmm. work the space, and so they were able to get in front of all these people and feel, make them feel comfortable about their business and going back to them and wanting to work with them. Mm -hmm. and one of the things, too, to mention that, that Chick-fil-A did is they gave something away. Now, a lot of times as a small business owner, you never want to give something away for free because, you know, you're always, you're always counting how much you bring in and, and what you spend. And we certainly understand that there needs to be some kind of a budget there. 
but a lot of times that free offer up front is building you business long term and I can tell you if Chick-fil-A is continuing to do promotions like this then it's obviously working so that's something to consider when you're planning an event maybe you do need to you know pay for a free meal or pay for something up front if it means that you'll be able to profit from it in the future absolutely so we talked about you know planning this event we talked about engaging at the event mm -hmm. working the space mm -hmm. what do you do after the event what is the plan of action that you would take or recommend following the event or leaving the event, right. what, what is the close? Well, one of the things that we always do at Tarkenton Financial Events is we have a clear message at the end of each event, and a lot of times it's tied to a promotion. So we kind of say, we appreciate you coming to the event, in order to get the business moving with your first piece of business, we'll offer you this free piece of marketing. So make sure that you have a clear message leaving that event, that it's well received by every prospect or client there. And then once you get back, you have got to capitalize on that. One of the most common mistakes that business owners make with event marketing is they wait for too much time to pass mm -hmm. before they follow up with those prospects. And you've got to get them while it's still very much fresh on their mind. Absolutely, and we talk about you know this plan of action when you're leaving, and you already have the face-to-face -face communication. Hopefully you've already initiated starting this relationship and following up, whether it be an email, whether it be a phone call, an email at the very least, a phone call, or even a handwritten letter to make this client you know feel welcome and that you're, show that you're thankful that they attended your event. Uh, these are all ways and plans of actions that you can close on and help bring these clients and make them feel more comfortable with you and your business. Certainly. If it is a small event and a, a, a small amount of number to where it's manageable for you to write handwritten thank you notes, the feedback is always very good on doing that. And it's just a nice personal touch that in this day and age will set you apart from your competitor. So I highly recommend doing something personal like that. Um, also, a lot of times we'll have a photographer at our events and um, we'll, we'll have pictures taken and we'll send those as part of the follow-up. So that's, that's another little tip as well that you can use. Absolutely, and I know you mentioned it, but I think the most important thing is that when you're following up, do not let this time pass. No. Do not let the window close of your opportunity to work with this client who has met you, who feels comfortable with you, and was thankful for your event. So make sure you're following up uh, and make sure you follow up quickly. Thanks for joining us on the Sales and Marketing Show on GSB TV. We'll be back next week with more great advice to help you start, run, and grow your business more effectively. See you next time.